what up guys, welcome back to my programming channel and today we're going to discuss whether Ethereum is even decentralized. You maybe have heard someone say that Ethereum is not decentralized and they are actually correct guys, partially correct. And you might, you might be thinking, Ivan, this is completely crazy. Of course, Ethereum is decentralized. It's a blockchain technology. And the whole idea of a blockchain technology is that it should be decentralized. However, guys, uh, the question and the topic of decentralization is not a yes or no question. It's a bit more complex than that. And Vitalik the mastermind behind Ethereum has actually a good article on his Medium page about the meaning of decentralization. And this episode will be based on his article. So if you want to read the original thoughts on this issue, you should definitely go and read his article on Medium. So let's get into it, guys. First, we need to understand what decentralization means before we can say whether Ethereum is centralized or not. So, in his article, Vitalik argues that decentralization consists of three different axes, or at least three different axes, the three uh, important axes. And those axes are the architectural axis, the political axis, and the logical axis. And a system such as Ethereum can be either be centralized or decentralized in all of these three axes. And it can even be the case, guys, that sometimes it's hard to draw a line and say that the system is centralized or decentralized in, in these axes. Sometimes it's somewhere in between and it's hard to decide. So let's, let's talk about each one of these three. Let's start with architectural axis. What does it mean? A system that is centralized in the architectural axis is such that if I remove a couple of computers from the system, it would collapse, it, it would crash. And a system that is decentralized on the architectural axis is such that if I remove several computers, maybe I remove the majority of the computers, uh, and so the system would still function as intended if it is decentralized in the architectural, on the architectural axis, guys. So, for example, Ethereum is decentralized on the architectural axis because we can remove many computers from the system and the whole network will still function. However, if you have um, a, a website that you host on your server and you uh, remove that server, of, co of course, the website will no longer function. Or if you have some system that, uh, uh, that consists of three servers and those three servers each need each other and if you remove one server those two other other servers would not work this is also a centralized system in, on the architectural axis guys so now we understand the architectural axis and of course ethereum is is decentralized on the architectural axis let's move on the second axis is political axis so for example a centralized system on the political axis could be a company or an enterprise where we have a CEO and maybe we have a board of directors and they decide on the course of the company. So such system is centralized guys on the political axis. However, Ethereum is decentralized on the political axis because even the foundation cannot make everyone to use their uh, their clients and uh, force everyone to follow their protocol. And so in that way, guys, in that way, Ethereum is decentralized when it comes to the political axis. Now, the last axis, the logical axis. So a system that is centralized on the logical axis is such that it acts as a single entity, as a monolithic object, while a system that is decentralized on the logical axis is such that we can divide the system in several parts and each of those parts would behave as 
uh, as intended and function as intended. So for example, the BitTorrent protocol and the BitTorrent system is decentralized on the logical axis because we can split the system into several parts and uh, those parts, um, the computers in those uh, split parts would still be able to use the Bitcoin, uh, or the BitTorrent, of course, the BitTorrent protocol uh, as intended. However, guys, however, guys, here is where Ethereum is not decentralized. Ethereum is, in fact, centralized when it comes to the logical axis because Ethereum acts as a single computer. You execute your contracts on, Ether on Ethereum and on this one huge computer that, that is running on the blockchain. And so in that manner, guys, Ethereum is centralized. And if we split Ethereum into two different parts, they would no longer function as intended. Uh, so the whole the whole idea of Ethereum is that it should be a single computer. It should act as a single computer. And so in that way, Ethereum is not centralized on the logical axis. So again, guys, let's, let's recap. The three axes are the architectural, political, and logical. Ethereum is decentralized on the political and architectural axis. However, it is centralized on the logical axis. If you want to read more about this uh, topic of decentralization, go ahead and go to Vitalik's Medium article. It's linked in the description. I think if you found this video interesting, you would definitely find the article interesting because this was just an introduction. However, we answered the main question of today, and that is that Ethereum is uh, centralized on the logical axis, however, decentralized on political and architectural axis, guys. So, thank you for watching me today. What do you think? Do you agree with, with Vitalik's description of Ethereum? Maybe you have your own idea. Write your idea in the comment section below, guys. And if you are a new viewer and you like technology, you like cryptocurrencies, you like programming, you should definitely subscribe, guys, because you will find this channel interesting. I myself I am a software developer and I post videos every, every single day, guys. So today we discussed whether Ethereum is centralized or not. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.